sardonyx, an objectively fun word to say, is actually a historically significant gemstone. In today's video, I'll be discussing its origins, its composition, and some interesting lore behind it. Super quick plug, mystery bags and boxes are back on the website. I have a 10, 25, 50, and $100 variety. These are the perfect gift for that little rock nerd, that little rock goblin in your life, and I know you won't be disappointed with them. These tend to move pretty quick, so get them while they're hot, grab them while they're available, and one more quick note, by the time you see this, or rather by the time this posts, I'm probably still going to be out of town for a couple of days, so orders will process as soon as I get back. Thank you for your patience, and let's get back to the video. Sardonyx is a gemstone that has been popular for many centuries, and the first known uses of it date back to nearly 4,000 years ago with the Second Dynasty of Egypt. The ancient Greeks and Romans went into battle wearing talismans engraved in the images of their gods, made out of sardonyx, believing that it would give them courage and victory in battle. It was also an important stone for seals and signets, as the hot wax doesn't stick to it. During the Renaissance, sardonyx was associated with eloquence. Public speakers and orators would wear it, and in doing so believed that it would grant them clear thinking. And, unlike much more rare gemstones such as sapphires, emeralds, and rubies, sardonyx wasn't limited to the royalty. It, it's been relatively common and inexpensive through much of human history. So what is it? The word sardonyx is the combination of two specific stones, sard and onyx. Let's break those down. Sard is a brown to brownish red and translucent variety of the mineral chalcedony. If you haven't seen my video on the differences between agate, chalcedony, jasper, and chert, I'll have it linked at the end of this video. It's well worth the watch. Pliny the Elder, whom you've probably heard me talk about a lot, has stated, or did state I should say, that it was named after Sardis in Lydia where it was first discovered, but the na or at least during his times, but the name probably came with the stone from Persia. And the name Sardonyx reflects this, being the amalgamation of two Greek words, Sardios and Onyx, which means stone from Sardis and nail, claw, or veined gem. Onyx, on the other hand, is also a variety of chalcedony, but specifically an agate. In the correct usage, it refers to a usually black and white banded variety of agate. It can sometimes be monochromatic agate with dark and light banding. Now this can, or could rather, be produced, and traditionally was, by soaking a lighter colored banded agate in honey or a sugar solution and then using concentrated acid, which turned the sugar infused bands black. There are natural varieties, however. And in recent times, the name has become somewhat confused with other banded materials, in particular banded calcite formed in cave systems such as the ones you see coming out of Mexico and Pakistan. These are often carved, and in fact, the vast majority of carved items called onyx today are a carbonate rock and not true onyx. It's a carbonate, and much softer and less durable than its true silicate counterpart. However, most of what you see called onyx today is not onyx by the original definition of that name. Words have meaning, people. I'm looking at you, pink amethyst crowd, but I digress. So onyx and sard are both varieties of chalcedony. Sardonyx is a variety of onyx that has the brown to reddish brown colors of sard. But what do you think? Have you heard of this quite pleasant stone before? Were you aware that most onyx on the market isn't onyx at all? If you liked what you heard, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you didn't like what you heard, then I thank you for listening this long. Have a great day, and stay shiny, my friends. See you in the next video.